So Nicola, thank you so much for joining me on the Teachers Podcast today. You're welcome, I'm looking forward to it. So we are in your office at St Andrews Primary School in uh, Bishop Auckland. That's right. Yeah. And um, so I just wanted to sort of tell a bit of a story. We actually know each other from before. So the strange thing is, is that you are actually friends with my auntie. Mm -hmm. And it just so happened that you had Ofsted a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And I asked you if you had, and you said that you'd be willing to talk to everybody about how that experience went. Yeah. And I'm so grateful for that. Thank you. Because... That was the one interview that I really mm -hmm. wanted to do. Um, find out, you know, how Ofsted was, you know, is the new framework different? How were people uh, feeling about it who have actually experienced it? Um, so thank you. Thank you so You're much. Welcome. I've got loads of questions for you, okay. quite a few from um, the listeners themselves as well. Um, I just think it's going to be such a great episode and people are going to feel so empowered by it. So thank you so much for giving up your time for this. Um, so the first thing I always ask everyone to do is give a bit of a backstory. Mm -hmm. So do you want to tell me how you got into teaching? Yeah. How you got to where you are? So I um, got into teaching because um, I, I wanted to make a difference. And I know that sounds cheesy, but I did. Um, I trained at Northumbria University, got my first job as an NQT. I was only there two and a half years and I saw a job advert in another school to be an art leader. And back then, we're talking 20 years ago, that was the next step. So mm -hmm. I applied for that job and I was there for um, 14 years and absolutely loved that school with a passion. However, um, I 14 was... 14 years, you don't look that old. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, but I was going into senior leadership and I was having to manage people that had become my friends. Mm -hmm. Because when you've worked for somebody that long, you become, you know, they come to your child's prison and you go to yeah. your wedding and things. And it's hard to manage people who see you as a friend. Mm -hmm. So it was time to go. And I came here to St Andrew six years ago as SLT. Um, within two terms, I was deputy head. And after a year and a half, I became acting head because my head teacher went off to do some common for two years. And she said, why don't you try before you buy? And I went through, I'm not ready. I can't do it. I'm not ready. I can't do it. You are ready. I'd only done deputy head for a year and a half. Mm. Um, so I said, okay, I'll have a try. Mm -hmm. And then once you're in that seat, it's yeah. really hard to come back out. And she yeah. got her job made permanent. So I became su substantive head a year ago. So I've been in the chair three years and a bit. Wow, thank you. How um, how did you feel about being quite a new head then when Ofsted called? Um, vulnerable, really vulnerable because I didn't know the tricks of the trade by then. Obviously, you talk to other head teachers of their experiences but none of my head teacher colleagues had had the experience of this framework. Yeah. So I felt really vulnerable and I felt a bit like a guinea pig. Mm -hmm. um, so it was kind of going into the unknown. And I, I suppose especially when you'd had no Ofsted experience being ahead at no, all. No, um, exactly. You didn't have nothing mm -hmm. to fall back on. We had two as when I was deputy because we um, the first one, when I first became deputy, we were RI and they came back quick, quickly after that. Um, but this was a totally different experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so talk me through it then. So mm -hmm. it was uh, whatever day and they called. Mm -hmm. So Tuesday morning, 10.30, um, my secretary comes in, knocks on the door. I've got Ofsted on the phone. And you can feel your face drain. Mm -hmm. If I'd been standing up, I think my knees would have gone. Mm -hmm. And so you process that information. It really, it's as if you've been smacked in the face. Yeah. It really is. Okay. Because imagine. we were kind of thinking they were coming in November, but they came um, beginning of October. So in November, I think I would have been more ready, mm. but it came a bit early. So I um, had the phone call, spoke to the admin person. She said, your um, inspector's going to ring you at half past one um, just to prepare you. Um, so the deputy head came down and we had a bit of, ah, they're coming, yeah, they're, they're coming, they're coming, they're coming. Oh my God, they're coming, they're coming. Uh, ring the governor, ring this, da, 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 on the phone to husband. I'm not, not going to see you, you're not going to have a wife for two days. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you go through all of that. Um, and then we sat down and thought, right, pull ourselves together. Mm -hmm. This is this is the information they want. Yeah. Um, got everything gathered. So when you say we, who was the other person? Deputy head. Yeah. And then we said to staff, Let's get together at lunchtime and we just kind of got it all out of our system, anything that we were worried about, what we needed to do. Fortunately, we already had a plan in the staff room for if we get the call, so-and-so is going to do this, so-and-so is going to do this, down to who's ordering the pizza, who's going around the displays, 
putting the things that hanging off on so we had it military style that's a great idea i bet that was kind of a lifesaver yeah. really because it meant that that was taken care of and everybody had a purpose because sometimes you think oh, i don't know what to do first yeah go see that and i didn't have to do anything i came through on a night and everything was done everybody yeah. knew what their roles were lost property was tidied because that was yeah. on the list all the little yeah. things and everybody had a role to do wow. and everybody just went into overdrive and just did it it was amazing that's amazing so how did how do you tell the staff then? So um, so they called. So they called, and then so when I'm speaking to governors, deputy head went round and spoke to the staff, and then we got together in the staff room, um, just the teachers, and we talked about um, what we're going to say, what we're going to try and get our deep dives to be, mm -hmm. um, who's happy to do this, who's happy to do that, um, who had any worries, and then we came back for the conversation at half past one, mm -hmm. and armed with everything mm -hmm. um i had already we'd be we'd been given from the local authority a list of questions that could be asked in that 90 minute phone call mm -hmm. so with the deputy before they'd rang um we, a couple of weeks before we'd already put some bullet points under those headings yeah so yeah. we just called that up and that was on the screen yeah. and he asked some of the questions but he didn't ask all of them mm -hmm. but if i had a rabbit in the headlights moment i had some kind of aids yeah to go down sometimes it's not that you don't know is it yeah you just, you just couldn't find it and you can't think of it yeah, yeah so that was really good um and then after 20 minutes of the first phone call he said uh, we agreed on the deep dives and he says right i want you to go away and tell your staff mm -hmm. what we decided so they know yeah um so we paused the conversation i went and did that came back for me again and in the end the whole conversation took two hours so it's meant to be 90 minutes, but mine took two hours. Mm -hmm. And I think that was to do with the fact that he was new. He'd only ever done one before under this framework. Mm. It wasn't new to being an inspector, but just this framework. Yeah. And I was new and I wanted to tell him everything and had a bit of verbal diarrhea at the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. So I was just wanting to tell him everything and celebrate everything. Yeah. Um, and during that time, the, the deputy head's writing down everything I'm saying yeah. so that we then had another meeting with staff. Could, could, could the deputy head also hear what he was saying? No, because um, as technology does its thing, I couldn't get the speakers on, yeah. to work yeah. on that occasion. So we just blacked it. Um, so we got back with the staff and said, right, this is the messages we've been sending to mm -hmm. the offset inspector. This is what he's expe expecting to see and hear, yeah. just so they had the same message, because that was important. Yeah. Because yeah. that's what he was coming back to find out, if what I was saying is true. Is true. Yeah. Um, and it's not necessarily that you were fudging it, is it? You just no. wanted to make sure that they knew what you'd said. Yes. Yeah. And we were all on the same page. Yeah. Um, just so it was fresh in their minds as well. Yeah. Wow, okay. So that happened that day. Mm -hmm. Then what about the day after? So we had a section eight, not section five. We were expecting yeah. section five, but we were, because our 2018 data wasn't so good, they risk assessed us on that, mm -hmm. which meant we got a two day. And we had two inspectors on the first day and one inspector on the second. Mm -hmm. Um, so that threw us a bit because we thought we were already good. So are they coming to make us requires improvement on based on that data? And our 2019 data was strong. Mm -hmm. And we were worried that they weren't going to take that into consideration. Mm -hmm. um, so that threw us a bit. And we thought we we're going to have to fight for good here. But mm. there was no fight. Um, everything that they saw, was, were, you know, they were happy with. And words like rigorous and positive and things like that. So um, they both turn up at 8 o'clock the next morning mm -hmm. and um, kind of introduce themselves, go and see the staff, introduce themselves, tell them how the day is going to be. The day before on the phone call, we agree the timetable as well. Mm -hmm. So I get that email to me so I, know, um, so I can give that to staff so they know where they're going. Because yeah. I think with the old framework, you kind of thought they were just going to pop in and that feeling of every time the door opens, is, yeah, is it going to be yeah, them? yeah. So that was really good that we could do that. And so one inspector did the read and deep dive on the first day and one did the maths one. Mm -hmm. And then in the afternoon one did the PE and one did the history, which was negotiated and that's what we said we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. In between, there was a bit of um, safeguarding, SMSC, talking to staff and talking to pupils. Mm -hmm. But the main part of the first day were the four deep dives. Um, and so during that day, as head teacher, I was twiddling my thumbs. I didn't know what to do with myself. Yeah, how to help. Yeah, I felt really um, useless, mm. to be honest. Um, 
and I didn't have any particularly meaty jobs to do in the office, but I don't think I would have been able to concentrate to yeah. do them anyway. It was just yeah. a strange feeling, very bizarre. Um, on day one, the fire alarm went off because the kooks set the fire alarm off. Oh, no. And so we were like, what do we do? What do we do? And the, he just, the inspector came out of his room and said, just do what you normally do. Mm -hmm. So we did, and it went like clockwork, and that was fine. Um, but you just kind of go into this panic or off here and the fire alarm's gone off, but they were yeah. absolutely fine. They were great. Then after school, um, the two inspectors come together and speak to me and the deputy, and mm -hmm. they have a conversation. We're not allowed to input in the conversation, and they're feeding back to each other. We're just there as observers, which was very odd, because you, you want to I've heard in. about that, and it, it, yeah. it is odd. Very odd. Um, so he's feeding Why back to Why do they have her. the conversation in front of you? So that we, I think at the end we were allowed to challenge or um, right, okay. disagree or input something, but we, we weren't allowed to say anything. We could take notes so we could mm -hmm. go back to staff and say this is what they've seen. Um, so at that point, they gave, it, gave us a little bit of feedback to us to say how it's going. So you kind of get, get an idea and, and then we negotiate what's going to happen the next day. So if they hadn't seen this, they want to see some more of this and who they want to speak mm. to. Uh, <clears throat> And then on the second day, it was just the one inspector and he was tidying up loose ends like um, speaking to the NQT, mm -hmm. um, a little bit more SMSC, pupil premium, attendance. Um, he wanted to see some more reading because of the timings. He, he didn't mm -hmm. see any in year six. Um, and then by half one, he was done mm -hmm. and he was in his room and he was pulling everything together. So did you have to provide him with a room then? Yeah, definitely. We did flowers, chocolate biscuits, um, tea, coffee, juice. We did all. It was like a hotel room for them. <laughs> wow. <laughs> really crawly. <laughs> I don't know yeah. if the flowers helped, but it made us feel better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure. But yeah. we looked at them and thought, this is yeah. a great school. This is a great school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But still, I, I suppose it's more about the thought as well, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We, we're a very welcoming school, and that's the kind of thing we would do for anybody, really, yeah. to make them feel welcome. So... That's who we are. Yeah, good. So, um, so he was in there for the afternoon and mm -hmm. then... So then he'll come and give uh, the deputy and I our feedback um, and tell us what our rating was going to be. And then we went to the staff room and staff... Oh, no, it was governors and myself and the deputy. And they gave feedback to governors, which is very similar to what he'd given us. Mm -hmm. um, and then he went and he was gone by part four. Mm -hmm. And then the staff all filtered in and we repeated it again to them and yeah. had a big sigh of relief. And it was all over. Oh, wow. It just feels like so much more than two days. It does, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. The first day dragged for me, but everybody else thought it was go it was like a roller coaster up and down, up and down yeah. constantly. And then the second day was more, I was more involved in the second day. Mm. Um, and I just felt like my feet didn't touch the ground because I'm attendance and I'm um, behaviour and I'm safeguarding yeah. all those things that you needed to speak to me about so about, yeah. wow. I had more involvement then thank you for telling us such a detailed um, story mm -hmm. because I think that's going to be so helpful for not only other head teachers and SLT but uh, you know anyone mm -hmm. in the classroom um, because you're just going to get an idea of you know what's going to mm -hmm. happen sort of what happens and I think it's important to say that the, the timetable isn't set in stone because every school is different everybody mm -hmm. has a different amount of staff he, absolutely didn't want us to change anything from the norm so mm. we'd agreed that he would look at history but because we block our subjects there wasn't going to be any history taught that week but we said we'll put some history lessons on no absolutely not mm -hmm. do not change your timetable that's not fair on the children it would, wouldn't be part of their progression of skills um so don't change anything we don't usually do a, a assembly on a thursday it's usually in the class but you didn't see one wednesday would you like us to do one no that's not what you usually do just go as you normally do which is which is really important. Yeah, what you need to hear mm -hmm. because as soon as you start changing things, then you get confused mm -hmm. and and then and the children like aren't could, in the routine. That's yeah, not fair. it can feel like it's not going well because you're mm -hmm. just thinking, well, you know, am I doing the right thing here? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and you sometimes I guess you try to pack things in that you wouldn't normally yeah. do and you don't feel prepared for it. Um, okay, so how did the staff react then when you told them the hospital coming? The staff were amazing. They were amazing. I, I feel up about it still because they were just, they just smashed it. I, I couldn't be happier. They just all took on their roles. Yeah. They 
they didn't flap. They just got on with it. They were amazing. Which Absolutely is... amazing. I can't, not one of them. They were just, they got on with their jobs. They knew what they had to do. They knew what the message was that we had to get across. They were so passionate. And some of the feedback that was given was how infectious their enthusiasm was. And that really sums good. up who we are. Yeah. And mm -hmm. also a really nice testament to you as well. You know, you say they were amazing. They knew what to do. They got on with it. And, but they obviously knew mm -hmm. they were very clear on what they needed yeah. to do and, and their roles and, and how they could make sure that it was successful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's... Lovely. Thank you, I shall take that That's compliment. Lovely. Good, I'm glad <laughs> because I'm I'm so pleased that you've had a positive mm -hmm. experience as well. Um, so how did you feel the Ofsted inspectors felt about the new framework? Um, I know that both of them had done one before. So I was I we were their second, and they were very conscious of how much time they didn't have to do mm -hmm. things as thoroughly as that I think they would like to have done it. Yeah. Um, and I know there was a lot of phone calls back to HMI mm -hmm. and just to check things. Um, he, I think he did two to see if he could apply the transitional arrangements. So if we've got two year transitional arrangement for the framework. So things might not be in place now because mm -hmm. we've just got the new framework. Yeah. But he had to be sure that we had the capacity to have them in place in the next two years. Right. So okay. he had to ring HMI to say, can I say this statement? Because I think in the next two years they will have this in place because right, it's I early see. days for the framework. Yeah. OK, good. So they also felt a little bit. I don't know, not unnerved, but you know, they, it was new, clear they, they were new to yes, it as well. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to do the checks and check they were doing it all correctly. Good. Um, do you feel like you were working towards this for a really long time? Um, yeah, probably for the whole time that I've been head teacher. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. three years it's been. And I would say last year I was beginning to feel the anxiety towards mm. it. And I know, if I'm being honest, hand on heart, it was affecting health mm. because I felt that pressure coming down yeah. and I can't tell you the difference now they've been and the, the, that phrase of that weight you lifted. you definitely look, you, you don't look like you've got a lot of pressure. Yeah, it, it's unbelievable the pressure. Mm. When you're going through it, you don't notice it or you yeah. try to deny it really. And But when it's gone, you realise how heavy it was. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, especially during the podcast, I reflect often on how I felt when I were in teaching um, in one school in particular and you know I tell this story of um, there was this one school where the entrance was only on the top floor it was only the entrance on the top floor on the reception mm -hmm. because it was in Hillside right. and as I got out of the the um, school I used to like it if it was slightly raining and quite crisp because that was the best air right. because I would always I would come out and I'd be like <gasps> mm -hmm. and I don't know why I had that ritual of doing that yeah. maybe I felt like I was breathing something mm -hmm. away and when I think about that now, I just, that seems so normal to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now when I think about it, I'm like, oh my word, you mm -hmm. really didn't know like how you really felt. Mm -hmm. And it's only on reflection, like yeah. you say, that you can look back and think, oh, maybe that wasn't okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and that's one worry for me about teachers, like how many teachers don't, don't realise mm -hmm. actually how the feeling is really not how they should be feeling. Just the week before... They came, we were expecting them to come November, but they came October. I'd had a conversation with staff, um, kind of thanking them because I know they were working ridiculously mm. hard because we were thinking, they're coming November, let's put everything in this term. Yeah. But I'd said to them, we can't maintain this. We can't go on this hard and mm. this work in these hours. What if they don't come November? Yeah. What if it's another term? Yeah. We're going to kill ourselves. We have to stop. We can't do this. Fortunately, they came and they're gone. And we've been yeah. able to breathe and also, you know, think about different... Well, we're going to get onto that, but but different ways of working, perhaps, yeah. based on your experience. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So tell me about the deep dives then, because mm. that, I think that's the killer question. <laughs> that's what everybody really wants to know. Deep dives! Well, we did want to wear our scuba outfits and, and flippers as a joke, but we thought that was taking it too far. Um, but <laughs> You never um, know, they might have laughed. I know. I think, I think I was woodhawed because they were human. They yeah. were lovely, approachable people. I don't know if we were lucky because I have heard some stories mm. and there's certain ones you think, oh, hope we don't get them. But yeah. we got two really approachable human inspectors Good. and I think they would have laughed. Good. Um, 
So the reading deep dive, I would say, was the most thorough out of the four. Mm -hmm. And everybody will get that. So you know you're going to get it. So our um, English lead was really prepared for that. Yeah. And so we had a long conversation, probably about half an hour with our English lead. Mm -hmm. And then he wanted to go and see it in practice. So yeah. she went on a learning walk with them and said, in this class, you will expect to see this. In this mm -hmm. class, you'll expect to see this. And, sh and sure enough, that's what they saw. Lovely. Yeah. Um, and then she sat down with them again and they talked about how often children read, what the phonics program is, talked about um, home readers and engagement mm -hmm. with parents, talked about... There was no talk about data. There was no talk about um, key stage two sats or anything like that. It was all what's happening now in your school. Mm -hmm. How do you promote reading? All those kind of things. Things that you will have seen on Facebook with lists of questions. Yeah, yeah. They were the questions that were asked. So if, yeah. you, and if you've got the answers to those, you're fine. You know, she had a file under her arm, but at no time did she open it. But I think it's a comfort blanket. Yeah, yeah. In case you do forget things. And, some, and she was coming out saying, oh, I forgot to tell them about this and I forgot to tell them about that. We'll go back, go back and tell him these yeah. wonderful things that you're doing. Um, and then he wanted to read with some children. So mm -hmm. he said, I want to talk to the bottom 20% of year one, mm -hmm. the bottom 20% of year two, and the bottom 20% of year six. That mm -hmm. was for our school. I don't know if it'll be the same for every school. Yeah. So I went to the to year one and sat with him, and one child at a time came out with their book, bless them. You know, this, this man who they'd never met before wanted yeah. to read with them, but he was lovely with them. And there was a moment when one child talked about a book about a dinosaur and he, there was a T-Rex in the in the book and he said, can you do an impression of a dinosaur, this inspector? And the boy looked at him and, and the inspector, you know, like this, like a T-Rex. And then the little boy started to do it. And I just thought it was a lovely moment. And yeah, I had yeah. an inspector and a child pretending to be T-Rex as an Ofsted day. Yeah. It was just surreal. Yeah. Very surreal. It made him human. Yeah, that's what made him human. Yeah. And, and a teacher. Yeah. Yeah. You could tell there was a teacher in him. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. So, um, and then he would talk to the children about how often they read, who do they read with at home, who writes in their reading record book, what's your favourite book, tell me about that. And then he read with a few more. And then he wanted to read with the, the top child in year one mm. because he wanted to see um, what the range was within a class. Yeah, yeah. And he was checking to see that everybody's book was matched to their ability. Mm -hmm. um, and then he went into year two and he'd already seen a child um, and who was an e uh, EAL and an SEN and he specifically wanted to read with her. Yeah. Um, and he had a lovely chat with her as well. Um, and she said, oh, well, I've got books at home, but I don't read them. You know, you think, yeah, yeah, out of the yeah. mouths of babes. Yeah. Um, and he read with a couple from there, and he couldn't see the year six children. So he came back the next day to make sure he saw the year six oh, children good. and spoke to them as well. So just a question on that then. So obviously you said um, that your um, English lead... Mm talk to him quite a bit how did that work in terms of the timetable do you have to get that person's yeah. class covered yeah then? fortunately we've got tiers that can just pick just up co cover yeah. class yeah i guess that's interesting isn't it because not every school will have that no, no 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 how do you how do you do that and i guess the timetable kind of covers that but you'd be worried wouldn't you mm. hang on what happens if somebody walks into my class when i'm not teaching them mm -hmm. it's and I think it's that was like taken something into, you'd want to avoid. Yeah, they were taking it into consideration, so they would know not the other one would know not to go into that class because that teacher's out because it wouldn't be fair. No. Um. So and they were very considerate of that. That's good because um, already I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. Um. So, so the reading deep dive obviously mm -hmm. talked about. What about the other? So the maths deep dive again. The other inspector did a learn and walk with the maths lead. Mm -hmm. Um. Again, this is what you'll expect to see here. Da da da. And then she asked the children to bring their books out and they had a look at the books. Um, then um, they had a chat about where we think we're going, what are our plans for the future, what's our action plan like, mm -hmm. um, all the questions we could answer. So again, the things that you see on Facebook, this is what you'll see. We just, we'd already prepared them. Yeah. And we'd done mock interviews with each other in staff room. See, that's in a really meeting. good tip, isn't it, yeah. to do mock interviews. That's why you were mm -hmm. so prepared. Um, and we also made sure that we were saying the same message as well for all subjects. So we had the rule we consistent, which we are, but we just wanted to get the same key phrases in. Um, so that went well. And then we did history. Now, like I said, we do it in blocks, so they couldn't see a history lesson. So yeah. they scrutinised the history books a bit deeper than they would the others. Yeah. Spoke to the lead and spoke to the children. And um, 
they picked up from the children that some of the children had misconceptions about history mm -hmm. and that we kind of thought oh that's kind of let us down a bit mm -hmm. so she asked they were talking about the great fire of london the children mm -hmm. were very enthused about it talked about where it started and she said so is samuel Pepys still alive and oh yes 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 he's still alive how do you know well we've seen him on the television when we watch magic granddad so they still hadn't had that concept of time yeah yeah, yeah um yeah. and so that was kind of pulled up that it wasn't embedded yet yeah um but you know that was one thing yeah and you know at the end of the day every person every school has mm. a lot of things to work on as well yeah um so you mentioned um when we're on the phone that you could actually choose some mm. of the deep dives mm -hmm. so um he said reading the maths would go without saying because we're primary and mm -hmm. then we had to pick two more one that we thought was i think it's really nice that you were allowed to choose yeah yeah. yeah, definitely. It had to be something we were proud of and a strength and that we'd worked on and something that we thought we were on a journey with. Yeah. Um, so we picked history as our strength because that was our starting point at the very beginning when we looked at the new framework and yeah. how to change our curriculum. And we'd done a lot of work around that. And then we chose PE because we just got a new um, lead in it and she was just starting her journey mm -hmm. on it. And we, it's a continual thing, sport, yeah. it changes all the time. So um, we chose those two subjects. So that's nice. I'd like to think that every school will be able to choose, but obviously we don't know yeah. whether, whether that's a thing. But I was really encouraged when you told me mm -hmm. that you've been able to choose. So it means also that you can avoid the ones that you really don't want them to look at. Yeah, yeah. so we well, would probably not choose computers, um, computing or music. So we just kind of they didn't even touch that, yeah. which was great because they're not our strengths at all. And you was able to choose mm -hmm. something that you could show that you yeah. were actively on a journey with, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, um, so how how did you find the whole experience then? For me and for our school, I can't say anything different but positive. Which I was blown brilliant. away by how positive it was. Mm -hmm. I wasn't expecting to feel like that. Yeah. And I said at the end, when I thanked the inspectors, I said, I, you hear with people saying, have you been done? Yeah. Have you had offset? Have they done you? I felt like we'd been done with. Yeah. We, it was a partnership, we worked together um, and we hadn't been done to and it wasn't a negative experience. We came out, obviously we got the result that we wanted, yeah. which makes a difference and had we gotten a different result I may not have felt the same but I, I don't think I would have. Mm. And um, I know you asked me, what, what do you think that was down to the inspectors or the framework? And I think 3070 we had some human inspectors which helped mm. and I really do think the framework made a difference because it helped us tell our story as yeah. a school and we could show off the great things and it wasn't all about the data, which is what schools are. Yeah, that's, and that's amazing. I feel like that's a really positive, mm -hmm. a positive step. Um, did the inspectors go around together or, or no, were they separate? No, separate. Um, so I feel like we've already touched on this, but how do you feel like you supported your staff to mm -hmm. get through it? Um, pizza yeah. at six o'clock. Uh, on the first night so I fed them and made sure that they were okay um, mm -hmm. made sure they went here till a ridiculous time sent yeah. them home to their families yeah. um, asked them if they needed some time taught me through what you're going to do tomorrow just so they had somebody to sound off yeah. um, but I didn't feel like I needed to hold their hand they yeah. were ready and yeah. so really one of the things that you did that you're not saying is you prepared them early. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. You, know, you didn't mm -hmm. prepare them on the day mm -hmm. um, or the day before. You prepared them early and they mm -hmm. felt equipped because of the work that you put in. Because mm -hmm. like when you're talking about um, you know, doing mock interviews, I think how many schools would actually be doing that? Mm -hmm. And that might sound really silly. Mm -hmm. But do you know what? We've got an event later today and I told them they needed to do a rehearsal because the delivery is important. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, yeah actually when mm -hmm. you when you delve deeper that is an important thing because you want to make sure that you're showcasing the best mm -hmm. and you want to say everything that needs to be said and you know we're not public speakers are we no and we no. just we need to have that it's rehearsal. about being feeling prepared and feeling confident that if you get asked that question you're going to have an answer for it yeah and the correct answer mm -hmm. without missing out important bits yeah. because it's not that it's not there it's, it's a, in a way, sometimes you feel like it's a bit like a performance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you miss one line, the joke's gone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And what's different about this framework is that the inspectors record everything digitally. So right. whereas before they had the clipboard and wrote everything down, yeah. which looks, they're sitting behind a, a laptop and they're typing away, 
you know, feverishly typing everything and they've got to open what they were calling cards. I'm going to open an SMSC card now. I'm going to open a safeguarding card. Um, and then he might look at her safeguarding card to check he's not answer, asking the same questions. Yeah. So that was different, a different feel as well. Yeah. So you could see them walking around with their laptops, finding somewhere to balance it on their knee to type something. Um, and they were getting you to grips. You almost feel like they should have some kind of different technology yes. like an iPad. Yeah, yeah. I <laughs> thought so. It would be less clunky. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and that kind of also, that I always think it creates a barrier if you have a laptop in front of somebody. And you could see they were getting used to the system as well. Yeah. So that was new to them. Yeah. And figuring out if they need new devices. Yes. Yeah. So I, do, I know there will be so many people listening to this episode trying to figure out, you know, what they're going to do for the next Ofsted, how to get as much information as mm -hmm. possible from you. What advice would you give them? So what was key for me was to have those notes yeah. on, for that phone call because you do have that moment like, oh, I can't do this, I can't do this. Mm -hmm. Calm yourself down and it's all on the screen. So I would say take some time, you and your deputy, to sit down and write out your context of your school. Mm. So that was the first question. What makes you different to the school down the road? Yeah. Um, what makes you unique? Tell me about your school. Secondly, strengths. What are your strengths? Mm. What are your areas for improvement that you think? What do you need to work on? Mm. What are you struggling with? Um, talk about staffing. Mm. Um, talk about your journey, how you how you've getting to where you are, um, and then talk about leadership, your middle leaders, and how mm -hmm. what kind of work you've been putting into that. And that doesn't sound much, but it did take two hours to talk about, and there were yeah. other questions that he asked in between. But having that aid memoir will save you. Yeah, and I always I think as well when you uh, talk to me about that on the phone, it just it, sometimes I think you don't think of these things, but it's such mm. an important part. So. If I've got like a big thing to do, what I like to do is sort of start, get everything out in my mind, but then have that open. Like I don't like to leave it till the last minute. If you leave it to the last minute, there's no extra thinking mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. But once it's in your mind, yeah. you might be going out for coffee or something mm -hmm. and it might just ping into your head because yeah. you've done the basis of it. Mm -hmm. And I think if you if you do that preparation in enough time as well, you can always add, add to, to it. it is what mm -hmm. I'm and that's to what say. we did. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I'd been on a course, I think it was the 9th of September. Um, where they'd handed out these questions and the day after we started it and I just kept going back to it. Oh, what about yeah. this? I could tell them about this. Yeah. When I was just so it. pleased I did it. That was a lifesaver. Yeah. I would say definitely do that. I think it's a brilliant idea. I would say um, give as much time as you can to your middle leaders because they are under scrutiny, not you as a head teacher yeah. from that moment on. Um, give them time to prepare, look at the questions, talk to each other, um, share what they're going to say, because you need to know as a leader as well what's happening from early years to year six, not mm. just in your class. Yeah. Um, so time, give your, your middle leaders time. Um, and I think that plan that I had for the Ofsted, if we, if we get the call, yeah. have that ready. That's amazing. That was, I'm sorry, I, I that. got that tip from another head yeah. and I thought that's and it was a lifesaver again so have that up and it becomes wallpaper but yeah. my god everybody knows where it is on the day yeah, yeah. and they go to it and it just ran like clockwork like yeah. I say ordering the pizza I feel like you could sell that plan yeah I should, shouldn't <laughs> yeah, I yeah. yeah everyone will probably mm -hmm. um, tidy the lost like, property can, uh, can you upload <laughs> the uh, template for that plan yeah. please no yeah. problem I'll give it for free that's um yeah, I, th I think that, for me, mm -hmm. was just... It's those little things that help you in the day. Such an amazing idea. Um, okay, I've got some questions from um, some listeners mm -hmm. as well. Um, so Lara wants to know, how did you celebrate the end of Ofsted or how did you thank the staff? So um, at the end, you just want to go to bed because you're so tired because you don't sleep. Yeah. They tell you to go home and have sleep, but you do not sleep. Um, the next day was a Friday, so we kind of down tools a little bit. And ha yeah. I, I did a really long assembly in the morning so staff could go and have biscuits and tea and just relax. Yeah. And I asked the deputy head to speak to staff and let them know that I was going to give them a day off during the year, which they gratefully which you just received. Perfect. Yeah, so they can choose a day during this year to take when it suits them. And as long as we can cover between ourselves, yeah. everybody can have a day off, including me. I give myself one as well. Good, I think you should have. Yeah. Because you didn't get that long assembly, did you? No, I didn't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so they owe me. I um, hope they saved you some biscuits. No. <laughs> oh, I really wish I'd have brought you, I'd have brought you some now. 
Okay, thank you. Um, Davina says, um, was there anything that really surprised you during the process? So like a moment of, <laughs> I really didn't expect that. Okay, so here's a story. And I haven't heard this. Uh, you haven't heard you the story. You teased me, but yeah. won't tell me. So on day two, um, the deputy head's passing the girls' toilets and a girl comes out looking white as a sheet. What's wrong? Miss, we'll call her Daisy. We haven't got a Daisy now, school. <laughs> Daisy's in the toilet stroking her hamster. What? Daisy's in the toilet stroking her hamster. Okay. So she goes into the toilet and here is Daisy sitting on the toilet with a lunchbox on her knee and a live hamster in the lunchbox stroking her hamster. <laughs> What's the hamster doing in here? We've got a hamster in. This is a year six child as well. Oh, well, I just thought I'd bring her for company. Right, out, out the toilet now. She takes the... Uh, the pack lunch offer runs down to the office. Psst, to me. Psst. Get in the office now. What's the matter? What's the matter? And the lunchbox is moving. Yeah. What on earth's in the lunchbox? So we come in here, into this corner, hiding, opens it up, and this hamster comes out. As if to say, is it upstead? <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah. What's it doing in there? I don't know. What we're going to do with it? I don't know. And we just had this panic moment. So we went into the other office where there was other staff, and we're like, there's a hamster in the pack lunch. What we're going to do with it? And it was just, honestly, it was like a faulty towers. Yeah, That's what yeah. it was like, faulty towers. Yeah. So we found a box in the office and because poor thing, there was hardly any room. It had a bowl of food. It had a drink of water. Um, had some so sawdust. She put, she put all the things. Uh, she's not even a packed lunch. She doesn't have yeah. packed lunch. So we made the hamster comfortable. And then um, we phoned mum and mum said, hey. Well, you know, the hamster's called Jenga. And she said this morning, Mom, I'm taking Jenga to school. And she thought, it'll not be the hamster. It'll be the game. Yeah. So off she went to school with Jenga in her lunchbox. So what are we going to do? So Mom said she would come down for, for the hamster. So our inspector was in here at the time. And I came in. I went, he went, are you all right? I went, look, I'm going to tell you something. But you're not allowed to write it down. He's like, oh, I don't know if you can do that. I says, no, no, I'm going to tell you something, but you're not allowed to write it down. He went, go on then. So I told him about it and he belly laughed. He absolutely <laughs> belly laughed. He says, you're right. I'm not going to write that down. He says, but my God, you should write that in your memoirs. And I will yeah. always remember this school as the school with the hamster. With the hamster in yeah. the lunchbox. It was brilliant. Aww, absolutely brilliant. I really wish the hamster was here now. Yeah. We'll just have it right yeah. across. Little Jenga. Um, okay. Davina will be really happy with that. Right. So, um, <laughs> That's kind of unique to our school. I really don't think that'll happen in any other school. No, probably no. not. <laughs> um, but Davina often comes on the road with us. Um, All right. And she's not here today. But um, yeah, she'll, she'll love that one. So Louise says, so regarding Ofsted's focus of paying particular attention to pupils who are uh, reading below age-related mm -hmm. expectations, are they looking for the lowest 20% per class or per year group? Um, for us, it was year group. And like I say, they only looked at year one, two, and six. So they didn't look at them all anyway? No, nope. no. Nope. Okay, um, so Lee says, having gone through the process, will you be changing anything that you do? Um, you know, has it helped? Has it been a reflective mm -hmm. process? Mm -hmm. Definitely. It's kind of given us permission to not make pieces of paper with everything on and keep mm -hmm. it. So um, in my cupboards, I have files upon files of mm -hmm. stuff that I've printed out, cohort files that I keep for every cohort. I print out the documents and I file them and it takes time and nobody looks. I don't even look at them. I yeah. have them there in case Ofsted wants to look at them and Ofsted doesn't want to look at them. Yeah. So I am scrapping cohort files. Yeah. I've got the data on the OneDrive. If anyone wants to see it, it's there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, other thing, other pieces of paper for the sake of it. Yeah. So when I do lesson observations, I used to type them up afterwards. I'm not doing that anymore. Mm -hmm. You didn't want to see them. It's for the teacher and I to use yeah. as a, um, a discussion point. Um, so all those things we used to do in case I've said, come and I've got this lovely document. I'm not doing that anymore. No. And you know now, don't you? I mean, it's not like, sometimes I feel like, sort of head teachers are told oh we don't need to see this but they think ah yeah but you might ask yeah. but now I guess you've experienced mm -hmm. it now you definitely know for yeah. sure that so they definitely didn't do it if now and then they would say can you show me some evidence of that mm. so for example um, 
we talked about how within our cluster we've got quite a lot of mobility and mm -hmm. I talked about how I liaise with other head teachers and say, well, I've got this child, safe gone concerns and I passed that, that on. He said, well, have you got some evidence of that? So I emailed another head that I knew I'd worked with. She wrote a paragraph in an email. He looked at the email. He was happy with that. Didn't need to print it out. Yeah. Um, he wanted to talk about looked after children. So he wanted to see the process that we'd gone through and our records for that. That was on CPOMs. He said, don't print it out. Just put it on the computer. I'll come and have a look at it. Mm -hmm. um, other things he asked for, he just said, just put it on your screen. I'll come and see it. You don't need to print it out. It's well, there. Exactly. Yeah. Which is good because yeah. you're saving the environment and I like that. Exactly. Yeah. That's really good. Okay. So I'm going to ask you some more questions. But also, I wanted to mention, like, when Ofsted came, so you're permanently, well, not permanently, but you're full time in year three right now teaching. Have been for three weeks up until Christmas. Oh my word! So the Monday after Ofsted, I was going to say, what's yeah. it Ofsted? Because I went on your website this morning. And I was like, you're teaching in year three till Christmas. How how are you alive? I'm not sure. I can't answer that question. But after Ofsted, one of our members of staff left quite abruptly, and we were unable to fill the post. And mm -hmm. um, we tried some supply teachers, but none of them could. Um, Fit our brief. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they're a tricky class. Yeah. So I just said, I'll do it. I've said a bean, so I'll do it. I am like, I'm just in awe. I just think that's amazing. But honestly, though, because not a lot of head teachers will go, do you know what? I'll take that on. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a long time to teach a year three class mm -hmm. and also be head of a school. Mm -hmm. I just like, if I had a hat, thank you. It'd be off because I just think that's mm -hmm. amazing. On the positive side, it's reminded me why I love teaching. Yeah. Because when you're in an office all day, you forget. And I've, I'm a creative person. It's very difficult to be creative in an office. Yeah. So I've reminded myself why I love it. Yeah. And what's good about it. On the negative side, I'm absolutely shattered. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank I goodness we've had a week off. I've had that week off to recharge with batteries. Um, and... I'm just thinking, get to Christmas, because once we get into performances and things like that, yeah. it's going to start relaxing. And Ofsted's been, the pressure's off a bit, um, so I'm just going to go for it. Yeah, I just think it's and absolutely mind-blowing, mind-blowing. That amazing. class need it, they need yeah. it, they're a tricky class, um, you know, and they need someone like me to sort them out, and yeah. they've already sorted out, they're fine, they're great, they're doing well. Well... Thank you. Big clap. Amazing. <laughs> um, okay. Right. So I'm going to ask you some um, questions that I ask everyone. Okay. If you could wave a magic wand, how would you solve the life-work balance problem? I would like to give my staff more time to do the things that they need to do. Yeah. So I would need some more money to employ another member of staff to take their children while they're doing their things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That would be the answer to all of our problems. Yeah. It's always time. Probably a few members of staff. Yeah. yeah. I always think it'd be really nice if we could only teach half the day. Oh, um, yeah. You know, and, and I think that might seem overkill, but actually the amount of paperwork that people mm -hmm. end up doing, you could just teach uh, maths and English, or you could teach reading and topic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and have the other half of the day to do all your marking, yeah. whatever else you're doing. Um, who was your favourite teacher at school and why? Mr Wilson. Mr Wilson was my... Um, tutor in secondary school and he was a funny bean um spiky hair glasses quite an old guy and it was him that said to me I want to work in a bank when I was younger because I love the idea of wearing a smart suit and that's all <laughs> I ever wanted and um I want to wear high heels and clip around the bank and make myself known and he said you can't work in a bank you're a people person you need to be working with people have you thought of teaching? And I hadn't at that point. And he sowed the seed mm. and I took it from there. And it was because of Mr. Wilson I'm here today. I really believe that. That's amazing. Yeah. Do you know, I love the um, I love the answers I get on this. They're always like really profound. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, where do you think education needs to go in the next 10 years? Forwards mm -hmm. is a good start and not go back to the old days of the old yeah. framework. I think this new framework is a good start. Mm -hmm. I still think there's a way to go. Um, I'm pleased that data isn't high on the agenda now and that should take yeah. some pressure off staff um, and I just would like schools to be that place that I remember as a child a fun happy place to be and though but for everyone not just the children yeah for the staff as well 
Yeah. Um, because I just think if you're enjoying teaching, the children will enjoy learning. And that's a big deal to me. Yeah, no, it is a big deal. And I think feeling, not feeling that this is the only thing in your life yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. um, so who's your inspiration within education? So for me, I kind of look back at the head teachers I've had as a teacher and think about who I aspire to be. And I've, I've come across a few head teachers, but um, one in particular from my last school, Helen Gladstone, I used to look at her and think, yes, that's, that's who I want to be. Um, and I can't put my finger on what it is, but she was um, very in control, um, wouldn't let, wouldn't be walked over by people mm -hmm. and if she, if she had a, a vision for something she would make sure that was but you would take everybody with you with yeah. her as well yeah. yeah um so i would say she would be my inspiration she's who i aspire to be shout out to helen yeah hope you're listening <laughs> make sure you listen hope she is i'll let her know and last one what did you want to be when you grew up then well bank manager just so i could just wear a bank manager. yeah just a bank manager so i could wear that lovely neat suit and wear high heels Thank you. You're welcome. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I'm really excited about getting this episode out because I think it's just going to be so useful for mm -hmm. everybody working in I education. I hope it has. Um, and yeah. I'm happy for people to drop me a line. I'm, I'm on Facebook on the primary leaders. so I can't. Super, thank you. We'll yeah. put that in the show notes yeah. as well. Yeah. So I can answer questions if anybody wants any. But I have to say it was a really positive experience and don't be afraid. It's, it really is a time to celebrate your school and there's so many opportunities to do that. Um, so enjoy it. And if you're an amazing year three teacher. Yeah, exactly. I'll have you. <laughs> Rescue her so she can answer all those yes. questions that you're going to yeah. send through. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.